Hi everyone, thanks for joining us this week on Forbes Flash. Let's get started. Twenty seventeen was a big year for the world's richest people, many of whom saw their fortunes grow impressively. We tracked the net worths of more than two thousand billionaires this year, and as we approached the very end of twenty seventeen, looked at who had the best year. It should come as no surprise that Jeff Bezos, who's been the richest person on Earth since October, gained the most. His net worth grew by thirty three point eight billion dollars this year, thanks to soaring Amazon stock. He's ending the year with a fortune of ninety eight point six billion dollars. Also adding billions to his wealth was Chinese real estate tycoon Hui Kaiyan. His fortune has nearly quadrupled since the start of 2017. Now for a quick rundown of some stories that came from Forbes this week. Even if you're not a Star Wars fan, you can't argue against the incredible power of the franchise. George Lucas sold Lucasfilm to Disney in 2012, but he's still synonymous with the brand that made him a billionaire. He took the top spot in our list of America's wealthiest celebs this year, with a net worth of $5.5 billion. Fellow MovieViz veteran Steven Spielberg comes in second place with $3.6 billion to his name, and last but not least in the top three is Oprah. Next up is a look at news that broke Tuesday: the U.S. officially blaming North Korea for WannaCry, the massive ransomware outbreak that impacted companies around the world in May. The U.S. is late to publicly attribute the attack to North Korea. Escalating political tensions between the countries could potentially have triggered the announcement. Trump's Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert described the attacks as cowardly, costly, and careless. And for those of you wondering how tax reform might impact your finances, we took a look. Despite all the focus on tax rates, some of the biggest changes don't have anything to do with that. Instead, focus on the changes to deductions. For 2018, the standard deduction amounts will increase from $6,500 for individuals, $9,550 for heads of households, and $13,000 for married couples filing jointly. The change in the standard deduction amounts was meant to simplify, but details added over the past few weeks may complicate that goal. <laughs> President Donald Trump is set to save millions if he signs a Republican tax plan. Eleven million dollars, based on Forbes's calculations. That estimate is based on the amount of money Trump earned in 2005, the most recent for which we have evidence of how his tax filings break down. There are a few ways Trump might save with the new plan, one of which being the estate tax. Before, married couples could leave $11 million to their heirs before handing over about 40% of remaining assets to the government. The new rule doubles that limit to $22 million, meaning Trump's kids will likely get an additional $4.4 million tax break on their inheritance. Dubai has always had impressive futuristic ambitions. Think flying taxis and robot cops. But now, the city wants to be the world's first blockchain-powered government. The goal is to shift all visa applications, bill payments, and license renewals to digital transactions by 2020. The strategy could potentially save the government 2.5 billion dollars each year as they shift away from time-consuming paperwork. Major financial firm BlackRock manages six trillion dollars in global assets, making it a force to be reckoned with on Wall Street. But it's also become a giant in technological terms, thanks to Chief Operating Officer Rob Goldstein. He's been perfecting a software program for the 23 years he's spent at the company, called Aladdin, which sets the firm apart from others. The system can track and analyze risks, show how the portfolio will react to different market environments, and more. It's what has analysts comparing the asset manager to Amazon, a compliment above the rest these days. Joining us now is Forbes' staff writer Lauren Gensler to discuss how the new tax bill could affect corporate America. After months of back and forth, Congress passed sweeping tax reform on Wednesday. One of the biggest winners is corporate America. Why? Because their tax rate will be lowered from 35 percent to 21 percent. A lot of companies have been vocal advocates for a lower tax rate. They say this will bring the U.S. more in line with tax rates around the world, and it will allow them to be more competitive on a global scale. They also say it will be good for the American economy because instead of spending that money on taxes, they'll be able to spend it on investment, innovation, and hiring. Immediately after word got out that Congress had approved the tax bill on Wednesday, a bunch of companies rushed to say how they would use the savings. AT&T was the first out of the gate. It said it would be handing out a thousand dollar raises to two hundred thousand of its U.S. employees, and it would be investing a billion dollars in the U.S. in 2018 once the bill has been signed into law. 
Boeing said it would move forward with $100 million in charitable giving and $200 million in employee training programs and upgrades to its workplaces. Fifth Third Bank said it would raise its minimum wage to $15 an hour for all its employees and it would be giving out $1,000 raises for more than 13,000 of its workers. Comcast is handing out $1,000 bonuses to over 100,000 employees. It will hire thousands of people, quote unquote, directly and indirectly, and it will also be spending $50 billion over the next five years on infrastructure. Republican lawmakers have also cheered tax reform, saying it will be good for the American economy and will benefit American workers. However, there's some skepticism about how companies will use their tax savings and who it will actually end up benefiting. For instance, in 2004, Congress gave a tax break to companies who were looking to bring back earnings they made overseas back home. But by and large, most companies used those savings to buy back their own stock and to fund dividends. So shareholders were the ones who ended up benefiting. In a recent survey by Bank of America Merrill Lynch, the most common way that companies said they would use their repatriated earnings was to buy back shares and to pay down debt capital investment was further down the list. There are also questions over the motives of some of these companies. AT&T, for instance, is locked in a battle with the Department of Justice over its proposed merger with Time Warner. Some people are saying that this is a way for AT&T to get on the Trump administration's good side. AT&T declined to comment about whether this is the case. Now that the tax bill has passed through Congress, it has made its way to President Trump's desk. He has applauded the tax reform on Twitter and is expected to sign the bill. Thanks for joining us. Tweet your feedback using hashtag ForbesFlash. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be off for the holidays next week. See you in the new year.